Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Good Effort Meg. If you're new here, welcome. Consider subscribing and stick around. I release new videos every Friday at noon, so there's always new content coming out, so you can be sure that there will be plenty to watch. Today, we're going to be sewing the vest to go along with the pirate shirts that I made in the previous two videos. So for both of the vests, we're using this pattern here because there's a couple variations of the vest that we're going to be making. So we're going to be making this vest here for Anthony. And then for my vest, we're going to be making this one. And really the only difference is, is that this one is much longer than this one. And because it is men's clothing, that's why I chose to make a shorter one, just so it wouldn't you know, be super extra long. And then the modifications that I decided to make to these as well is to not include buttons on these vests. And the reason being, I think that the fabric that I chose for this project, I think it would look really cool unobstructed from buttons. If you yourself are making a pirate costume, then of course, like you can add the buttons. That was just a design choice that um, I opted to not incorporate. And without further ado, let's get crafting. For the materials that I'm gonna be using for the vests, I found these two really pretty maroon colored tablecloths from the thrift store. And I thought they would be really pretty and a good contrast to the cream that I chose for our shirts. And for the lining of the vest, I'm just gonna be using this king size sheet set that I also got from the thrift store. That was mainly just because it's what I had on hand. I haven't used it for the shirts yet, so I thought it would be good just to use up those uh, resources. So yeah, so this is the fabric that I'll be using for the vest. Here I decided to seam rip the entirety of the fitted sheet in order to take out that elastic so I can use it for any future projects. As always with any of my sewing projects that I do, I like to trace the original pattern onto some craft paper and cut it out there just to preserve the original pattern. I was actually able to cut both Anthony and my vest out of a single tablecloth. So I actually have a whole second tablecloth that I didn't cut into at all. So hopefully I can use that for another project at a later date. So unfortunately, some of the audio got corrupted on the instructional piece of this. So the first step is to begin with the tie pieces that'll be going on the back end of the vest. We're going to fold the right sides together and then stitch along these three sides. So we're essentially going to make two hot dog pieces. And for the vest, uh, Anthony and I decided that the right side, so the part that we want showing, is where the design is shiny, rather than here where the design is matte. So first things first, right sides together, let's fold these guys in. So 
the next step is to turn these right side out, press them, and then we'll attach them to the shirt. I found this part to be a little bit tricky, so I tried a combination of some tweezers, but I eventually found that using chopsticks or some kind of dowel ended up working really, really well. So now I'm just gonna press this and then I'll do it for the other three. So now that we're done with the tie pieces, I went ahead and pinned them onto the back of the back part of the vest and we're just gonna base these into place. The next step is for us to attach the front and back pieces together at the side seams. And right now we're only working on the outside pieces, so this'll be what everybody's gonna see. So we haven't started on the lining yet. So now we're on to the lining pieces. So just like what we did on the outside pieces, we're just gonna stitch across the shoulder seams. So I finished pinning the lining to the outside piece, right sides together. And now we're gonna go ahead and stitch it on. So the next step is we're gonna trim the seams that we just sewed, and then we're gonna flip the entire vest inside out. So I'm gonna get started on trimming the seams. So now that we have all of our seams trimmed, the next step for us is going to be to flip this um, to the right side of the fabric. So let's try that. So the way that this describes to turn it to the right side is to pull each front through the shoulder. trying to do that. Fortunately, I have relatively small hands. I think the best way I can describe how to do this is you have to reach in through the back of the vest, through the hole, grab the front piece and pull it through as if you're turning a sock inside out. All right, there we go. So now, how <laughs> do Okay, I'm supposed to go out the same. And then, okay, so you pull the two shoulders to the same back opening and then this just flips right side out. Perfect, and now we're gonna press this and then I'll be back. So this bit has been throwing me for a bit of a loop, but I think after some time and just reading and digesting, I think I figured it out. So essentially the next step is we're just trying to connect the back to the sides. So we wanna flip this so that the right sides are together like so. We're gonna line up these notches and essentially we're gonna machine stitch the outer back piece, so not the lining, and the outer side front piece together. So we're gonna like machine stitch those together like that and then I believe we will turn those stitches inside and then hand stitch 
this piece to this piece with a slip stitch. So I think that's what we're supposed to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a whirl. It might take me a couple tries. Essentially, what we'll do after this is kind of like fold these pieces over and then just slip stitch down. But from the front, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Need to cut a few stitches there, but got captured in there, so I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna go do this with all the other ones. stitching that together so the last step is to stitch these in. So what I'm going to do to make it a little easier on myself because I'm not the best at hand stitching is I'm going to press these under nice and clean like this and then on the top side similar to what I did on the shirts is I'm going to stitch right in that ditch and it should capture everything and then that way I won't have to hand stitch anything and yeah it probably won't be as clean as if I hand stitched but it will be easier for me so I'm gonna do that okay so I like <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to do the stitch in the ditch method just because of where the stitch the stitch if I did it in the stitch in the ditch it would hit roughly here um, and that's not going to capture this. So I am going to have to hand stitch this. So that's going to take me a bit, but I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. On this first side, it took me probably about 45 minutes just to do this first one. But once I got the hang of it and found a good rhythm, the other three sides only took me about 15 to 20 minutes each. So it ended up not being as bad as I thought, which was great. product so this is my vest and I'm so happy with the way it came out and how clean it looks and the tablecloth blew me away it just makes the vest look so luxurious with the embroidery design and how it shines so I would definitely recommend this pattern if you're interested in making a pirate costume and Anthony's came out wonderfully as well, and I'm just super happy. The only difference between his and mine is just his goes a little bit longer um, to give it a little bit more of a dramatic effect for his costume. And here's what it looks like on with our whole get up. Anthony was able to find us some props from a thrift store, so we had a blast at our event and got a ton of compliments on our costumes, so I was very, very happy. So I think 
week for next year for this event. I think I'm going to add each of us a coat and the pants as well. So we had opted not to do that this year, just given that it was supposed to be fairly warm and just to cut down on cost. <laughs> so, um, but I think these came out really well. They held out super well. Um, so yeah, I would recommend these patterns. If you guys needed some pirate costumes. Who holds a sword like that? <laughs> Well, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching me make these costumes and I hope you learned stuff from some of the mistakes that I made. So I hope if you decide to make either of these patterns that you can take my lessons learned and apply them to your patterns. Uh, I hope they were a little bit helpful. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll leave it here and don't forget to subscribe and like this video and I'll see y'all in the next video.